Hey gang, thank you for joining me for Two Texas Lobsters React. And today I've got another video by I Did a Thing. You seem to really enjoy the last one that I put up. Uh, this one is called I Made Hermit Crabs Armor and Then Released Them. So without any further ado, let's see what I Did a Thing is up to. How you going? Australian animals have developed some pretty cool and creative ways of protecting themselves. Like echidnas, it looks like a dick. magpies, stingrays, the late Steve oh. Irwin. and hermit crabs. Uh, oh. But some of their methods aren't quite strong enough. So today, I'm gonna to make hermit crabs stronger by giving them some armor and weapons so they can destroy anything that tries to touch them. All right, the first thing I need is some hermit crabs and I could just buy them from the store, but they are expensive and it also seems a little unethical. So instead, I decided to get them from the wild, taking them away from their home, family and friends. Now I want to find a crab that is around 3 centimeters in diameter, so I brought my tape measure and began to measure. But after losing a tug of war with an octopus... Ooh. Oh, he got it! He's strong! I gave up on the measuring and started searching for any shells I could find, but unfortunately all the shells were either empty or occupied with snails, which I crushed up for the fish, who started to get really friendly with me, almost too friendly. So I decided to call it and get out before they get up to any funny business, as these guys are notoriously named Blue Gropers. So, I started looking in the rock pools, creeks, and just anywhere with water, until eventually I found this guy. I saw this rock moving before. So then I gave the rock a wash, and began looking for more. And after searching some more in this area, I found two more hermit crabs. Let's call them Sandy, Randy, and Handy. And I made them this home, which is filled with sand and random Lego pieces, but more importantly, has a heat map that emulates the warmth that a hermit crab is used to getting from heat mats that exist naturally in the wild. Okay, now I just need to make the metal shells. And the first thing that comes to mind is casting their shells out of aluminium. And I can do this by 3D printing some shells with some cool designs like this, and then taking a cast of the 3D print and then pouring metal in to fill the mold. And I want the crab's armor to still look like shells, but also have a Mad Max style to it with stuff like armor plates, some spikes, buzz saws. Cool. So I 3D printed all my shell designs and <laughs> baked them in the sun to harden up. Then cast one in plaster with some arms for the molten metal to run down and left that for a couple of days to dry. Now I'm hoping that when the molten metal enters the holes, it will instantly melt the resin and styrofoam creating a void which the metal will fill. Oh. So next thing, I invited the neighbor's kids over for a 24 pack. <laughs> We're not leaving until you finish. Don't right? give your babies beer. And then collected all the cans, which I melted down in my furnace. And when they seemed liquidy enough, I poured them into the mold. This guy is an accident waiting to happen, man. Oh. 
He makes me so nervous. And I don't think there is any chance that this worked. So I gently cracked it open to look. And that didn't work at all. The aluminium didn't run into the hole. And I could try again, but the bad thing about doing this with plaster is the mold is not reusable and takes a very long time to remake. So instead I decided to make a mold out of high temperature silicon, which I've used before to make high temperature flashlights. And then we'll use pewter as the metal, which I can just melt on the stove, which is great as I won't burn myself as much. And to make the silicon mold, I took the resin shell and placed it at the bottom of this PVC pipe and then poured silicon over the top until it almost came over the shell. Then I let that dry before pouring another layer on the top so it runs inside the shell and then let that dry. And now hopefully I can neatly pull apart the layers creating a two part mold. together which didn't work so I made another one but this time I used graphite powder so they would separate now comes the pewter which is this metal here which makes you feel incredibly strong which I just cut into chunks and then melted it down in this little sauce put and if you're following along from home it's very important that you also use a pot with a plastic handle like this one which will catch on fire releasing poisonous fumes <laughs> Then once the metal was no longer its solid self, I poured it into this hole. Barefooted, pouring metal, molten metal, barefooted. Creating this. And it turns out casting a hollow spiral tube is very hard, but I kept trying. And after pouring and destroying at least 10 molds, I finally managed to get this. That one actually looks pretty good. Whoa! Which is almost good enough, but I've realized a problem. This shell is very heavy, at 90 grams. Wow. And if we compare that to the weight of a hermit crab, which is zero. The shell weighs infinitely more, which is a big difference. So I need to come up with some other way of doing this. And I think electroplating is my best bet. And the first thing I need to do is make a bath filled with the metal I want to plate in, which is nickel. So I just got two nickel plates and put them in a vinegar solution and then got this wire and attached it to both plates. And then very quickly, the bath turned from clear to green, meaning it's now filled with nickel. And I know this setup looks bad, like I'm making meth or something, which I am doing, don't get me wrong, but just not here on this table. Okay, now that I have my green bath, I tested to see if I even know how to electroplate using this copper wire, which I connected to the negative power and then put the positive on this nickel chunk. And now hopefully the nickel metal moves from the negative through the bath onto the copper, coating it in nickel. And after only dunking it in the solution for like 30 seconds, the copper wire was covered in a layer of nickel, which means this should work. So I covered the shells in a conductive paint and put them in and waited and waited and waited. And the shells were much slower than the copper wire, but it does look like it's working as I can see some nickel. So I left them overnight. And this doesn't actually look that bad at all. It's kind of shiny and is also very light while also having the added strength from the metal. And best of all, it makes this noise, which is good enough for me. So I coated a bunch of different shell designs, sizes, and then also did some in copper, which looks awesome and has this it. crystalline metal growth on the end of the spikes, which makes the copper almost look organic. And then put all the shells in the tank for the hermit crabs to choose. And this is the annoying bit of the video for me, as I have no idea how long the crabs are going to take to pick a shell. And after watching them for a week, nothing happened. Although I did learn a lot about the crabs, like that Sandy loves to eat fish, Randy loves digging in the corner, and Handy, well, uh, he loves... Yeah. But 
More importantly, I learned that all of them are liars. And despite what a hermit crab tells you, they are not actually crabs at all and had been lying to me for two weeks before I discovered they were actually something called a decapod crustacean. And I have no idea what that means. But in the end, it doesn't really matter because it looks like something has finally happened. And I came back mm. to the tank one night to find this empty shell and Randy in his beautiful new home. Look at that guy. He's got armor. <laughs> that is awesome. And personally, I would have picked the larger shell for myself as he barely fits in the thing, but it seems fine as he can still do all the things he loves doing, like running, digging, and climbing. It's also really awesome seeing Randy dig under the ground as when he's under, it's just the spikes on top of the shell poking out in a similar way to an echidna, which would really hurt if you stepped on him. And I really didn't think this would work at all. So I am very happy with this result. And I could wait longer to see if the other crabs also adopt their new shells, but I've been doing this for two months now and I feel like I'm really pushing my luck and I'm gonna be responsible for the death of a crab soon. So I just decided to call it here and release the crabs back into the wild. <sighs> Andy and Handy in their boring shells. And then Randy in his beautiful armor. Okay, buddy. So hopefully he now lives a long, happy life destroying the ecosystem he lives in. And the crabs aren't the only thing I'm releasing. I've got three leftover metal shells, which I've placed on beaches all over Sydney for you to find. Here are some clues on where to find them. Um, I've written a, um, a poem. Um, at this beautiful point, you'll feel like a man. So just climb down this gully and follow my plan. When you get to the ledge and look around, you'll find the shell where I peed on the ground. <laughs> oh, this guy, man. At this beach, you'll find many. At this beach, you'll find many men laying bare. I was tempted to join them, but I didn't dare. So I placed the shell right under this rock, but all I could think about was that man's smile. <laughs> stupid. Absolutely stupid. <laughs> Where the. Where the planes land, you'll find this beach, and I've placed the shell just out of reach. If you come first and want to flex, make sure you leave something for the person that's next. Thank God that's over. <laughs> oh, that guy. Uh, I did a thing, I did a thing. Check out his channel, I hope you enjoyed that. It's quite interesting. I actually enjoyed it. Um, please ring the notification bell, like, share, subscribe. I'm up to five subscribers now. Woo! I'm excited about that. Uh, leave down in the comments what you thought about the video and uh, what you'd like to see next. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.